Hello everybody, I'm Boaz Feiler. I'm an evolutionary astrologer and this is the evolutionary astrology message for the week between September 29th and October 6th, 2018. My, oh my, is this year flying by. Am I getting older and there's more gray in my hair? And it's funny, you know, I, I, I looked forward for the time that I would have some George Clooney uh, grays on my sideburns. Um, still don't have any sideburns though, but if, if I would, they would have been gray. Um, anyway, we're heading into a week that is, in a way, molding us or, or, or setting us into a mold. A week that could prove to um, shuffle our cards, so to speak and bring up to the surface things that are of essence and of importance to us in our lives right now. So as I go down to the weekdays, I want to start with the 29th, it's a Saturday, and it's a time that we should be aware of our indulgence. We should be aware of our emotional need for sustenance, warmth, acceptance, because it could be too high. It could be uh, um, too extensive for our own or for the benefit of our surroundings. Nevertheless, this is a time that our intuition could be very much heightened, as well as our moods that could be elevated at the time. We could be happy. It's a great time to be vacationing, going outside, or dealing with anything that causes you happiness or opens up your horizons, like philosophy, anything concerning spirit, anything concerning um, higher learning. Um, and it's a fast-paced two days with the moon in Gemini in general. And when we get to the 30th, a Sunday, it's a very active time throughout Saturday and Sunday. There's a great air trine on Sunday, um, almost like it's 2 a.m. on Sunday. It's like between Saturday the 29th and Sunday the 30th. And remember, if you are in the east coast of the United States, take it about nine hours backwards. If you are on the Pacific uh, uh, south side of this globe, like Australia or New Zealand, take it about 10 hours ahead. Excuse me. So the 30th has a lot of energy. In it, this grand air trine, which has to do a lot with our mental capacity, with our cognitive uh, aspect, with our left brains, anything con concerning communications and decisions and moving around and taking care of things we need to take care of. Fast paced, fast paced, and a lot of energy. The participants of that grand air trine are the moon and Mars and the sun, and there's this is a time that we could actually join together what we think and, and, and get to a conclusion that is right for us in our life right now, the way we feel about it, and the drive to actually manifest it within our lives. Um, all throughout that, these days, um, we need to watch how we state things, we need to watch how we communicate things, because we are heading into a square between Mercury and um, Pluto, which is going to be exact on the 3rd. But we can feel it as we are heading into that exact square. And we can make mountains out of mole hills. We could be too dramatic and too obsessive about our ideas and about uh, uh, the, uh, our statements. Could be um, un... Um, well, I forgot the word in, Hebrew, in uh, English, but they could be unbalanced. That's what I was looking for, unbalanced. So that's a really good time to be a little more logical and step a little away from your emotions and make sure that you're not overdoing it, overstating it, digging in too deep. We have to be careful not to be too cruel with the words we say at this time. So... Um, the 1st of October, 
Pluto stations direct, starts moving forward. I don't have a lot to say about it. Uh, Pluto is a really slow moving planet and it's stationing direct. Well, you know, we could say that uh, transformational processes within us start developing in a forward moving fashion. Again, we stop um, going over what was already chewed within us and start um, um, consuming more of that dark matter so we could actually start processing it for the first time. Um, that's all I'm going to say about it. I'm just going to say that that day, Monday the 1st, is a very sensitive day. So is the 2nd. There's a moon in uh, a, a Cancer which is already sensitive and emotional and likes home, family, and acceptance and warmth and TLC much more than it likes anything else. You know, it's a great time to be cooking at home and making the best meals and, you know, just taking, taking time on the sofa to read a good book or something. Um, but through these days, we have to be really sensitive not to act out from our hurt place or from our post-traumatic uh, places. And, you know, a lot of the time when I see these transits he coming in, I already adapt ahead of time a more feminine, flowing, accepting, uh, caring, motherly um, sort of atmosphere and energy and I charge myself with it. And so when I reach these days, first of all, I'm not as harsh and judgmental with myself or others. And even if others are, if I see those instances in my surroundings, accepting them and taking care of the people is much easier with that kind of energy within you. And you learn much more about yourself, about the things. You can see the things that other people are struggling with and, 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 and recognize that you are struggling with the same things and actually benefit from that emotional cognitive process that goes within you, goes in within you. And we have to be careful not to be too harsh judges of ourselves and others on the second. That's a Tuesday. And on that second uh, of October, we have a grand cardinal uh, square in the sky between the moon and the sun, Saturn and Chiron. Um, we have to be careful from clashes with authority, uh, with our parents, with our bosses, with our husbands, with paternal figures. It's a time that we need to watch out that um, both our emotional side and the way we act out in our life, the messages we send out and our actions in our lives are not standing an abrupt con uh, uh, contrast to laws, regulations, um, to they're not crossing anybody else's territory or, or um, in a way hurting somebody um, or putting somebody down. It's a time that we think about our basic necessities, about the laws that we need to abide by in order to be really happy. You know, Saturn is about our own laws. It takes a long time to understand what those are and f get a, gather enough experience to actually know what your laws are. But it takes many years later to actually have the courage and discipline to abide by the laws formulated by your past experience and actually do what is right, good and healthy for you. So this is a time that can consolidate these things. A lot of the time through exposure to our hurt, painful places, either within ourselves or within others in our surroundings. It's, um, it's a good time for intimate emotional communication. And as I said, we are heading on the third to that exact square between Pluto and Mercury. Mercury is the ruler of Gemini. It's the planet of communication of our cognitive mind, our uh, uh, navigation throughout life. And 
our ideas, our words. And Pluto is about transformation. It's the ruler of Scorpio. It's about those cycles of death and rebirth, of regeneration and transformation. It's about understanding the hidden protocols that actually make us say things we don't really mean or we don't really understand why we said them or from where they have stemmed and bringing up those um, hidden hidden protocols within us that most of the time stem from a post-trauma or a feeling of neglect or betrayal and, and actually cleanse them out, bring them into the light and not let them um, insert themselves to our words and our thoughts as an automatic response without us even being aware of that process. Um, so being exact and breathing in before we actually say we before we actually say something is is a good advice. Moderation is a good advice, uh, especially on the third. Saying that from the afternoon onwards, it's a great time to deal with anything that concerns higher knowledge or just fun and adventure. The fourth has another fixed grand square. Um, as I said, this time it's fixed. It's between uh, um, Mars, Venus, the Moon, and Uranus, especially with relationships and work and things that are of value. Be careful throughout the fourth. Don't make any hasteful decisions. It's a very energetic time as well, so we could have a lot of things on the table, also fun things and good things within our relationships or within uh, uh, our work environment, things that actually provide us with money and sustenance, and we could be dealing with some challenges around these, you know. Maybe we've taken up too much upon our shoulders, maybe we want to change things. And this is the time that we actually understand that we need to act and walk forward in order to be more satisfied in our life. We understand what it is we need to renew in our subjective uh, viewpoint, uh, uh, as I said before. The fifth is when Venus stations to go retrograde and starts its retrograde movement. Um, the Venus retrograde cycle this time starts at October, in October 6th uh, at about 10 degrees Scorpio in 50 minutes. And then she's going to start moving backwards. We are going to have a very dramatic end of October. 24th, 25th, 26th, basically up to the 30th and the beginning of November are very dramatic. 24th, there's a, a, a full moon. Um, the full moon is when the sun and the moon are opposite. So Venus is conjunct the sun and Uranus is conjunct the moon and they're standing opposed. It's a very dramatic time and the exact uh, opposition to Uranus which is a, a, a high point in this, in this retrograde on its own, is October 30th. But in the middle, October 26th, uh, Venus is in the heart of the sun, Kazemi, with the king, with the sun, and it's a lower conjunction, it's an inner conjunction, and it's more of an earthly uh, form and matter and um, atmosphere. And what is this Venus retrograde? And what are my advices for a Venus retrograde? Well, first of all, as we know, Venus is in charge of everything that is harmonious and beautiful and, and gratifying in this world. Everything we learn to love and enjoy. And, you know, Venus and, and, and Earth and the Sun have a very beautiful, unique dance, one around another. They actually create a five-pointed star which is known as the pentagram or the star of Venus. And, or some people see it as hearts and some people see it as a rose, which are all symbols connected to Venus. And it does this five-pointed star every eight years. So that's five points every eight years. Five uh, uh, times eight is also 1.6. 1.6 is pi, the golden measure the Fibonacci sequence. 
this is the Venusian structure that is apparent in everything within nature, from the minute to the great, from the fractals within atoms and, and within matter, to the way the stem grows and the leaves on the flower grow, to the way that uh, um, the sky and the winds are shaped, and the storms are shaped, and the clouds form, and to the way the galaxies form in the sky. And when plastic surgeons and painters and sculptors and architects and interior designers want to make something beautiful, they use the golden means in order to make us or anything else more beautiful or gratifying to the eye. <laughs> Um, yes, so this Venus cycle, as I said, it's stopping, going retrograde about 10 degrees, 15 minutes, Scorpio, and then a dramatic last couple of days of October, last week of October, beginning of November. Finally, by November 17, she starts moving forward on the 25th degree of Libra. By the way, it's on the ascendant of Israel, should be a good time for Israel. Hopefully a time with a peace deal that we could actually move forward on. And by December 18th, she actually moves away from the shadow of the retrograde. She reaches the 10th degree, 50 minutes of Scorpio, where she started moving backwards. And now she's free of that shadow. And we are as well. In a Venus retrograde, a lot of what we get value, satisfaction, and love from can change. We can see things from a different viewpoint as well. So it's a great time to contemplate things. It's a great time to look at things from a different viewpoint. About making long-term decisions, I would wait until at least the middle of November, you know, when it steps out of its retrograde to actually make and implement those long-term decisions. So let's say I want to get my hair cut very short. I would think about it and discuss it with myself, but until November 17th, I wouldn't actually call my hairdresser. And the same goes for renovating an, for renovating an apartment or for uh, um, anything that you want to make more harmonious and more satisfactory in your life or of better value. Um, saying that, a lot of the times, these changes are imposed upon us on a Venus retrograde. Like, I remember that my beautiful, beautiful garden, I don't know if some of you saw my movies from a few, my uh, videos from a few years ago when I used to make daily forecasts back in old Jaffa and I had this amazing vine with the most amazing grapes in my garden. And just a few days before Venus retrograde, they started renovating a building on the yard, you know, and all the um, building materials and dust start coming down. And a few days later, my gardener cut the stem of the vine by mistake. You know, he wanted to clean things out and he cut that main vein of, this, of the vine by mistake. And about 15 years of, of grape, uh, um, of grape growing was room. You know, you see that this, this beautiful creature, this beautiful grapevine, just deteriorating and, and, and drying up, and you have nothing, nothing that you can do. Uh, so a lot of the times, these changes are uh, imposed upon us on this time. And of course, a, a process of rebuilding, and rebuilding something that is of even greater value, and importance to us is taking place at this time many times. But if it is up to us, then I would wait until Venus would step out of its retrograde. And if we can't wait, just, you know, weigh it well. Don't be impulsive about it. Ask around for advice. Um, think it through. And that's what I had to say about the Venus retrograde. Um, Saying uh, one more thing about that Friday, the 5th, the moon is in perigee. It's closest to the earth. There's a lot of emotions in the air and a lot of intuition in the air. Uh, a lot of need for sustenance, emotional sustenance and security in the air. And 
it also is conjunct Regulus, the royal star of Regulus, and at all times they would say this is a good time for business deals or a good time to do anything of importance, honor, uh, um, not only to us but to the people around us as well, and do it sincerely and do it humbly or our downfall is expected as well. On, on the 6th, it's a Saturday, there's a grand earth trine that really puts things on the ground together, settle things down. It's a very harmonious, tranquil time. It's between Uranus and the Moon and Saturn. It's a time that can help us really understand what it is, which roots should we really deepen in our life? What should we innovate? What should we strengthen? What should we change? And what should we actually um, button up with, with concrete slabs so it will actually be a stronger structure in our life. Saying that, the Saturday evening and night is a wonderful time to go outside. It's a wonderful time to try new things, to be in the company of people we love, to eat, drink, and basically enjoy yourself. So with that optimistic note, I want to end and tell you that I enjoy your comments and likes and shares and they expose these videos to more people on Facebook and I thank you for it. And also for joining my group, whether through the computer or the smartphone or frontal here in Israel, if you want to learn astrology with me, give me a ring uh, to my American or Israeli number. You can do it through WhatsApp or just write me on Facebook. Of course, for private consultations or any question you might have about astrology. Thank you for watching. On behalf of Georgia and myself, have a beautiful time. If you are celebrating holidays, happy holidays. Take care and goodbye.